welcome back to the data center. In today's video, we're gonna try and repair this IBM X3650 M4 prototype server we have. This server at the moment has multiple issues like the other prototypes we have. Um, this server specifically, its RAID controller has an issue uh, which can be solved by firmware where after a while of it being plugged in, it will simply not do anything along with the power button not working at all. Um, so I can push the power button on it here and absolutely nothing will happen. I can hold it down as if I was trying to initiate a forced off, does nothing at all. Now, I've turned on the IMM LED through the IMM. Um, that's the only current way to power up and down this server. I have managed to find the fix online for this and download it without needing any sort of license. So that's always nice. Um, a next step is just to get it to boot that and install the update. I have tried to do this already, but since it won't detect the RAID controller at the moment, it's not actually possible to do. Now, I am hoping that when I unplug this, the power setting is set to automatically turn back on. Um, it will get stuck in a boot loop of trying to go to the network adapter, or if we're lucky, maybe it will actually boot into Windows. Uh, our only problem with doing that is that we don't want it to boot anything just yet. Um, and the reason for that is once it goes into Windows and we hit reboot, the RAID controller is going to disappear again. So we're actually going to need to disconnect all of our drives as well. Um, I'm fairly certain it is this server, but I'm not 100% sure. And I've actually got some Cat6 cable on the way to redo this mess. Um, it's gotten out of control. There's fibre cables mixed in there as well, just to make it even worse. The very nice thing about servers and how they have these identification lights is that you can easily tell exactly which server it is. So from here, I can tell that it's this second server down. So I'm gonna unplug this power supply. Just move that to the side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the second of the power supplies. And that is the server off. Okay, so the next instruction on the sheet was to hold down the power button for 15 seconds just to drain the capacitor. Um, so let's hold that down for a moment. And I was hoping I'd be able to pull out the drives whilst I do this, but I don't think I will. Normally you don't even really need 15 seconds for these to actually drain the capacitors, but uh, we'll see. So let's pull out of all of our drives. So we have an OCZ Onyx SSD there. Uh, I really don't have much space to put these down on. Um, let's put it on top of this super micro server for now. With them all unplugged, we can now actually get the server plugged back in and hopefully we can power it back on um, and quickly enough make it in time to my computer upstairs to initialize this firmware update, fingers crossed, before the RAID controller dies again. This issue is actually happening on this server here as well. This one isn't a prototype model. Um, so I may have to see if I can repeat it on this. The only problem with doing it on this server is that this is one of the main hosts. Um, as a temporary workaround, I have installed a different RAID controller. Um, I've installed an M5015, I believe it is. Uh, I pinched it out of one of these X3550 M3s. Um, so, with a bit of luck, let's try plugging it back in. That is the server plugged back in. It's now flashing its power button light. And weirdly, we now have a flashing number one. Interestingly, now the power button actually seems to have worked. It's the first time I've seen that happen. I do wonder if it's actually worth me flashing this boot image onto a USB and doing it directly in here. Um, hmm. I'm actually going to do that because it's only about a gigabyte in size. And we do have two USBs on the front, which is more than enough. Let's go and get that sorted. I'm actually gonna unplug the power, I think, from within here, uh, just so I know that when I come back in and push the power button on it again, it's gonna come on first time. Let's make sure I grab the right server here. There we go. Perfect. Right, let's go and get this USB burnt. Okay, so I've got a monitor plugged in um, and that is wired up around here into the server itself where I've also plugged in a USB keyboard and mouse along with the USB, USB that contains the bootable image. So with a bit of luck now and no drives installed, we can hopefully plug the server in and get this 
Blackburn where update going once and for all. Those are both now plugged in. It's very interesting that it only lights up number one, even though all four are plugged in. Um, okay, and it seems to be starting up. We've got a system initializing screen on here. Now the system should automatically boot to the USB as it's the only media that contains a bootable image at the moment in the system. However, knowing servers, they'll always find some way around it. Let's see what exactly what it does. When I loaded it up earlier, it seemed to boot a live, a live version of Linux, so. System scanning, connecting boot devices. So this here is normally where the RAID controller should kick in. Blank screen. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So we're gonna want F11. Oh, connecting RAID controllers. That's already a better sign. I believe it's F11 for the boot menu, so I've pushed that. With a bit of luck, that shall now take us to the boot menu. Okay, so it says all of our disks are gone. So that means the RAID controller is currently active. Um, press any key to continue or C to load the configuration utility. So uh, we're just gonna put a random key in because we aren't too fast uh, about that. Please exit, so I'm gonna push escape to get out of that menu there. And hopefully now we'll get our splash screen. Before it was throwing cursors all over the screen as well, so I'm not 100% sure on whether the uh, UEFI is properly flashed too. We do now have all four flashing lights as well, spotting that there. And nothing on the screen still at all. And we are going to select USB storage. My fans have now ramped up again, so I wonder if we've missed the timeout for it. I wonder if having only one US, uh, one power supply rather plugged in will make any difference. So there's a cursor up here, there is. So that says tool center, yeah, we'll go for that. That's what we want. Might actually be easier if I turn the lights off. Right, let's see what it says. Loading a Linux image. Still got all four lights blinking, so the IMM hasn't crapped out just yet. It's actually nice as well when the lights are out you can actually see all the other drive bays flickering because normally in the day or with the lights on you can't see the uh, tiny little leds that uh, are responsible for blinking when we have drive activity sleep 15 that's interesting not a network boot that's fine we are booting from usb so that is correct mounting a temporary disc by the looks of it. Sleeping for another 15 seconds. Is there something wrong? Failed? T to find boot time message file. I have no idea what that means. failed dropping into shell. How brilliant. Right, maybe in that case we do need to boot it from the computer. Um, I'm gonna have to be super quick at running back. Although weirdly, I wonder if it will... No, okay, it's not having that at all. Right, let's run back to the computer and see if we can get the update going. That's very interesting that it's not liking the USB. It is a few minutes later. I've told the server to boot from the IMM so I've hooked my computer up to the IMM and stuck the disk in it rather than using the USB and it seems to be getting a bit further than it was before so where we got stuck last time was up here where it's trying to find where I'm assuming where the media was and for whatever reason it couldn't find it on the USB um, and right now it's determining IP information for USB 0 which I believe is the IMM because it has a virtual uh, adapter 
for operating systems to talk to the IMM. So fingers crossed that works. Though one worrying thing here is it says no volume groups found. It did when I rebooted it as well. It gave me the same RAID card error message uh, about no drives because obviously we've got them all here. So fingers crossed it is still working. We've just got to make sure it finds this IP address, I think. Otherwise, we're going to be in for a real treat. A load of text just flashed by as well. Oh, here we are. We have an next term. Awesome. Here we go. Tool center. Right, so we want to do updates. We've got to do this as fast as possible. Uh, yep, we want to do the update. Go. I did click that, didn't I? Yep. Awesome. Interesting as well that it's actually using uh, Mozilla Firefox. I'd have thought they'd have their own custom browser and the uh, time is actually wrong as well. So that's interesting. Right, yep, I accept the terms. Do your update, right, comparing updates. Awesome, let's go. And we can see here the active machine type is 7915. So that is the X3650 M4. The only struggle here is that since we're doing it all directly over network, loading anything or you know comparing updates is going to take a lot longer than if we were doing it over a usb because it's got to go straight back up to my computer and through this mess it can't be very fast even though it is all gig cat 5e hmm. i'll come back once it's compared the updates okay so it's found the firmware update and we've got 55 seconds to execute it so Let's punch the next button on that and fingers crossed, it can do it. So hopefully this passes and then we can shove all of our drives back in and with a bit of luck get into Windows, get the IMM updated, get the DSA up updated, get the UEFI updated. And then hopefully this server will be usable. Successfully installed, awesome. So in theory now, we can reboot successfully installed 0 0.36 awesome that's the one we needed so let's close out of that now i don't know if we actually need to unplug the server or anything uh, i'm gonna wait for it to go down on there and then what i'll do i'm gonna power off the server and we'll plug all of our drives back in let it redetect them and since we'll be doing a warm reboot so whilst it's still got power in it normally that will that would trigger the issue so we'll see if it does it then. So let's get our drives pulled back in. And then with a bit of luck this time, everything should just work. So the firmware was supposed to fix that. Power on. Well, that's disappointing. Right, let's unplug it. Maybe it needs a full power off. Okay, so server's plugged back in we still got that number one flashing normally when the servers like come on when you first plug them in just all of the lights instantly come on so maybe we do need a firmware update still to solve this issue okay so system initializing it's got to the part now where it should start booting windows if it's going to that's much better I did notice as well, it's actually showing up one of the drives is being faulty. I may just try sticking it in a different location. The only annoying thing is I can't tell if it's this disc or this disc, because I have no caddies. Um, but going off how these work, I'm assuming it's this one. Um, weirdly, it appears to be booting off the SAS drive. Applying security policy. Awesome, right, let's see if it'll let us in. Okay, so I've logged into the server locally rather than via the domain. Uh, we're going to pop into Mega Raid Storage Manager here, which is going to want me to log in again. Let's just make sure everything is being detected as normal. So, we have 
to Xeon E5 2620 V0s, that's fine. Uh, 24 gigs of DDR3 at 1333, that's fine. Okay, so we are boosting off the SSD, though those should not be at 100% usage for that. That's wrong. Um, okay, that's fine. So the 32 gig SSD isn't being detected, and we do have a RAID, very likely a RAID 1 or... I want to say RAID 10, actually, rather than RAID 5. That's got updates that needs to be done. Um, it's detecting 10G and... Now with our Ethernet. That's very weird indeed. So why is our team of normal NICs disabled? Foreign. Interesting, I guess. So let's see if that orange light is gone. It has, so it must have just assumed that it failed, so that's weird. Um, I'm not entirely sure how we check the firmware version. Is it running everything at 6 gig per second? It is. Temperature is 0 degrees. What temperature is it? It is 8 degrees, so that's, I guess, about right. Are there any others reporting temperature? 13 degrees, that seems a bit more normal. Right, what is this saying? What is our firmware at? 2014. So that's going to need a good update. Now, since it's on, I'm going to try and crack off some of these firmware updates that it needs. So IMM, UEFI, DSA. Give it a few reboots and fingers crossed it stays working. If not, well, looks like I'll be back. But for now, I think this server is sorted and ready to go. Um, I'm not going to install Hyper-V or anything just yet. That's assuming it's not installed already, just because I can't trust it at this moment with it having failed already. Saying that though, um, some of these other servers have failed and had the same issue in the past. However, they've just come back to life without needing a like a super recovery firmware update like that um, to a point where the server was unusable without it. So, we'll have to see, but thank you for watching and hopefully Hopefully there won't be another video on this server because uh, I don't want to be dealing with it again. Unless it's good. In that case, it's fine. <laughs>